honoring others. And so this morning, we, I, I have prepared a little thing for you. And the topic of it is, what's my name? And so you are going to do some research after this because I'm going to give you some hints. And on here we have, uh, uh, you can see the first hint is Bethlehem. And you must have heard things about Bethlehem. You know who was born in Bethlehem, yes? Mm. Don't say it, adults. I just keep it in your mind. <laughs> All right? So we know who was born in Bethlehem. And this person was born 1,000 years before Jesus. So we know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem, yes? Mm -hmm. This other person was born 1,000 years in Bethlehem. And he has a father who was a name that we call some females the same name these days. His name is Jesse. His father is Jesse. And he has grandparents. I know your children have grandparents or some people who are standing for grandparents, yes? And the grandparents or the grandfather name is Boaz, B-O-A-Z, Boaz. And the grandmother is Ruth. We have quite a few people in our society named Ruth, but there's a book in the Bible named Ruth. And he has six brothers. He has, he has six brothers. How many brothers were there? How many male? He's a male, so there were seven of them. And he's the youngest of the seven. And he used to do a little job as a little boy. I know you all have tasks, children, at home. But one of the tasks I know you do not have is to look after sheep. Because we do not live in that society where we have goats and sheep, and so, unless it is outside of the New York uh, City area, okay? So we know that people are listening in from all over the world, and so this little boy, his task was to look after sheep. And when he was looking after sheep, he had to fight bears and lions to protect the lambs. Get them off from him. Maybe use a rod, or they call it a staff, to keep off these animals from his beloved sheep. He had to fight all of these. Now, during that time, he has, there was a king, and the king's name was Saul. And uh, um, we, 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 we do not have many people these days named Saul. I do not know why. We have Paul. There's Paul. We have Paul, but we hardly have Saul. But this king's name is Saul. So during his youth, sometimes this, this Saul was very sad. So many things made him sad. And so his servant said to Dave, oh, sorry. <laughs> his servant said to him, go and play harp. Go and, did I give away the name? Oh, you didn't hear. I hope you didn't. Okay. So he said, go and play music for Saul so he can be happy. Go just cheer him up. So you know what he used to do when he went to look after his animals? He practiced on his harp so he could do it very well. So he was a very good harp player. And so he practiced and practiced. So when he grew up, he wrote songs. And these songs became sacred music for the Jewish people. And these songs are called Psalms. So you're, my question to you is, what's my name? Because next week I'm going to finalize by giving you some more clues and you will be able, because you're going to do some research now, so you will know 
what's his name. Amen? Amen. I pray for you. You pray for me. I love you. I need you to survive. I won't harm you with words from my mouth. I love you. I need you to survive. Amen. So at the stand now, we will listen to the uh, minister of steel pad music as he plays for us.
saying, when uh, the steel power was uh, beaten, we can shake. The trees are shaking in praise of the Lord. So let us, when the music is going on, let us shake in praise uh, to the Lord. Uh, this is the time, in, the time we're going to pray to the offering. Everything has changed. The offering uh, basket is uh, by the door. And uh, as we come in, we drop our offering. And if you forgot to drop it while you are coming in, uh, please drop it while you are going out. Uh, and uh, the blessings of the Lord will be with us. Uh, the church is open and the church has responsibilities. Uh, the church needs to be clean all the time and uh, everything has to be sanitized. It's adding more expenses to the church, to the running of the church. So please, let us uh, add a little more too to our offerings and to uh, our giving so that the work of God will continue. Shall we pray? Abraham, to Isaac, 
and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the loss of man. He was buried in the valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Hoa, but no one knows his burial place till this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired, and his big vigor had, had not abated. The Israelites were for Moses in the place of Moab 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him, and the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a, a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was on a great, uh, on, uh, on equal, equal for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And uh, for all that, for all the mighty deeds and all the terri terrifying display of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. May the Lord bless the reading of his words into our hearts. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. And this is found in Matthew chapter 22, verses 15 to 22. And those of you who are here, it's in the bulletin. Those of you who are at home, it's found in Matthew 22, 15 to 22. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him, along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then what you think. Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me in the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this, and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. May God add his richest blessing to the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Amen. Amen. We will now uh, um, listen to Minister Benjamin as he proclaims God's word in his song. Minister Benjamin.
take his ways, and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and return unto the Lord, return unto the Lord, for he will have mercy and abundantly pardon. He will have mercy and abundantly pardon. Abundantly pardon. Seek ye the Lord while he may And to God, the things that belong to God. Let us pray to God. Lord God, speak to us in the quietness of this time while we wait on you. Speak, Lord, by touch of tongue and by touch of life. 
And so let your word be spoken. Let your word, O oh God, be heard, and then let your word be lived. And so let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Wedged between the parable of the wedding banquet and the questions about the resurrection, we have our text. And our text is set up to present on the surface an engagement of the question about taxes. I say on the surface it appears to be that. The Pharisees were out to entrap Jesus. They were out to entrap him so that they can bring him down. So what did they do? They sent out their smartest students and they recruited some Herodians to go with them. Need to understand here that the Herodians were persons who were preoccupied in advancing the plans and schemes and agenda of the Herod. In a sense, they were the ears and eyes of the Herod. So the Pharisees, they sent out their disciples, their smartest students, to Jesus, accompanied by the Herodians. And they had one question they needed to put to Jesus. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? We need to understand that if Jesus answered yes, the Herodians would be happy. But then the Pharisees, the religious preoccupiers, would see that as a revolt against God. So either way, Jesus would be entrapped, either for the sake of the Pharisees, or for the sake of the Herodians. So these two sides, normally enemies of each other, came together seeking to entrap Jesus. You know, we always think that we are the smartest one on the block here. No, it's so funny because <laughs> you see some ads on television even now in these times which present as if they're the smartest person if they don't mention that they're Republicans that you will be suckered into voting thinking that they're one of you. Got to be careful. Jesus being Jesus, being the smartest one without having to declare it, Ask them to show him something that they use in everyday life. Show me a coin. They brought it to him. He looked at it. He said, all right. So whose image is on this one? Whose title is this again? <coughs> oh, it's the emperor's. Well, it's a no-brainer, Jesus said. Give to the emperor what is his, and give to God what is God's. Don't think that you mix them up. What Jesus was saying to the disciples of the Pharisees and the Herodians was simply, it is your responsibility to do the right thing. It's always your responsibility to do the right thing. But you know, I can keep talking about it's your responsibility, but if we don't claim it, it's always yours. We always think it's the other person's, huh? So here is how I want you to remember this message today. I want you to remember it as it is mine 
The responsibility is mine and my enemy. Because too often we look at others and we push onto others responsibilities that we are not willing to take on on ourselves. It is mine. Now when you look at the text, you will hear Jesus saying some things in this text. He was saying that they should model the right thing. He was saying that they should inject, infuse something into the life they are living, the relationships they have. He was saying that their encounter between the religious and the civil necessitated something. And he was also saying to them that they are placed as mothers to engage. So let's start with M, mother. We know that a model is a small copy of the real thing, no? So if we are mothers, then we are mothers of Jesus. And everywhere we saw Jesus go in scripture, we see him seeking always to do the right thing. You remember at the wedding at Cana of Galilee. He didn't want to push himself into things. He didn't want to upset the upper cart of those who were responsible for the wedding. But his mother came and said, they are without wine. Right? And then turned to the folk and said, do whatever he tells you to do. Because Jesus was always seeking to do the right thing. Jesus didn't just simply go out of his way to put a wedge between the civil living responsibilities and the religious responsibilities. He was always seeking to do the right thing. And if you and I are copies of Jesus, if you and I are created in the image and after the likeness of God, then we need to be always seeking to do what God would do. You know, in a sense, a model is one who must serve as a pattern. So not only must you model Jesus, you must model the pattern that others should follow. Because you are a representative of Jesus. So no matter where you find yourself, no matter where you might be located, whether it be at work or at school or at home, you and I are, recall, are called upon to model the life of Jesus. Seeking always to do the right thing. Asking of our lives the right thing. So that always, the small copy that we are of Jesus will reflect the true Jesus that is in us. It's not enough to be called a Christian. We must model the life of the Christ who sets the tone as to what is Christian. So you and I are called to be models because it's our responsibility to do the right thing and the model is the model of Jesus. But if we are the model of Jesus, if we are the small copy of Jesus, if we are representatives of Jesus, if we are servers of the pattern that Jesus lived, then we are also called to inject, to infuse into life and into relationship that which is different. You know, when you look at the word, the meaning of the word to inject, it says it means to infuse. It means to put something into another. So then, you know, you go to 
the doctor and the same must get an injection, no? And they put something in you. They force something into you. You and I, if it's our responsibility, if it's mine, then I'm asked or called upon to inject by my words something that is different, something that will interrupt the process as it goes along. So what you say should reflect your nature. What you say should reflect who you are. So understand now, if you're modeling Jesus, what you inject ought to be about Jesus. Jesus always seeks to do the right thing, so what you inject into the relationships you have is the Jesus model. But it's not just by your words, but also by your actions and by your thoughts. You see, often enough, we might be comfortable in saying things, but never acting upon them. It's both acting and speaking. So we say that you must go to vote by the gums. We tell people that. But somehow we find it hard to do it. So they give us early voting, no? So you don't have to wait until election day to go to vote. You can go out ahead of time. And the interesting thing about this is that you can go to any of the early voting places to cast your vote. And then you can also show up, if you don't want to do that, show up on election day and do it. It's not enough to say it's the right thing to do, unless we are willing to do the right thing as well. So we need to be injecting, to introduce into life, into relationship, into conversations, the missing feature, which is the right thing. It's not enough, my brothers and sisters, to just hear people say foolishness and let them go. We must inject the truth. We hear it all the time, and they, in the ads that are put out, or in conversation of the uninformed, whose memories are short. We need to bring them back to the place where they recall or are confronted by the truth that contradicts the falsehood that is being spewed even now. So how on earth then you are gonna save that which is pre-existing condition coverage? when you will demolish all the coverage. According to President Obama, you can't allow them to pull this okie doke. <laughs> if it's abolished, it's abolished, it's not there. And we must call people out on that, but we must put ourselves in the midst of it. And sometimes we don't do it because we're afraid. You're afraid to bother Jesus? Remember Jesus, tell that fox that I'll do today and tomorrow what I am supposed to do. It's a kind of confidence, it's a kind of fearlessness that Jesus, the one we model, seemed to demonstrate. So if we are going to model Jesus, we must be willing to introduce ourselves into conversations that are next to us. You know, I always say to people, if you don't want me to say something to you, don't say it in my hearing. <laughs> right, Susan? <laughs> no, but it's something I say all the time. 
that if you are speaking loud on the phone, then it means that you want me to hear your conversation. And if I hear you say foolishness or incorrect stuff, I'm going to correct you. You may get mad at me. You might even tell me how because sometimes I'm standing at the, just outside the church and I hear people talking on their phone and I'm saying under my breath, then no, that's not true. That's just foolishness. And they look at me as if, what? And I look at them as if, what? Because you're speaking it in my hearing, and if you're speaking it in my hearing, then you're inviting me into your conversation. So you and I must model Jesus. And we must be willing to inject ourselves as the change agent. But we must also understand that our being mothers necessitate us to be present. What do I mean? To, ne to necessitate means to make something unavoidable. You hearing me? So when you make something necessary, you can't avoid it. You need it. So we need to understand in this season of voting that it is our responsibility, it's my responsibility, it's your responsibility to choose a president whose agenda li lines up with your interest. So if that president is going to take away your health care, it, it means that that person doesn't line up with your interest. If that person is going to take away your justice or your access to justice, then it means that that person is not lining up with your interests. If the person is against equality, being treated as others, as the majority in the population is, then that person is not living out your interests. And yes, if the person treats you as if you are just a vote, then that person is not living up to your interest when they seek to suppress your vote, to marginalize. But it's not just your vote, you know. It's also about the, in the census. You know, we know that they say that you don't have, they don't have to go, but they're closing down. But the critical thing that you and I need to be in mind with regards to the census is that it makes sure you get counted. It makes sure that you are represented. It makes sure that you and your community are resourced. You pay tax. So when public plans and, and, and projects are put in place, they should also come home to you. But the census makes that possible. And if you look at our text, what Jesus was saying to the, to the Pharisees through their disciples and the Herodians is that they now must necessitate the right thing, put the right thing in such a way that it's unavoidable. Make people be ashamed of themselves. May people be offended by their own actions. But it's not just being a model, and as a model injecting something that is right into a wrong situation. It's not just about necessitating Making necessary, making something unavoidable, making your presence unavoidable. But it's also about engaging the words. Engage means to bind oneself to something or someone. You know when you engage somebody, brother Bob? Yeah. <laughs> you bind yourself to them, no? So one of the things that you and I must do is that we must bind ourselves 
to something or we're going to fall for every solitary thing. But we must, if we're going to engage, then we must draw into something or into someone. So when we are engaging in conversation, we are seeking to change people. We are seeking to point them in the right direction. We are trying to turn them right direction first. So that they can move to accomplish the things that they should. You know, ever so often people fail to accomplish their goals because they're looking in the wrong direction. And you and I are called to engage them so that they begin to turn and see the dawning of a new day. But to engage also means to interlock, to interlock with something or with a cause. You and I need to engage people on things that matter about us as God's children, as Americans. So when they talk about make America great again, we need to understand that when they're talking about that, they're not talking about us having the freedoms that we want, but rather to, for us to be in our places. And so we need to understand that we must interlock ourselves with this cause for justice, with this cause for full civil rights. And part of what it means to engage is to enter into conflict. You know, the late congressman John Lewis talks about good trouble. If you and I really are engaging as Jesus did, then we cannot avoid entering into conflict. Because it's good when you're pointing people in the right direction. You know, Proverbs 26, verses 4 and 5 seem to present a contradiction, no? Proverbs chapter 26 and verse 4 says, Answer not a fool according to his foolishness or his folly. And then, or else, you'll be like them. And then in verse 5 it says, Answer a fool according to his folly, or will they think they're wise? So how do you navigate that? Answer not a fool according to his folly, or you will be like him. Or answer a fool according to his folly, or they will appear to be wise. It's like this. You don't try to have an argument with a junk man. Because once the alcohol wears off, nothing you said will be remembered. What it is being, what we're being asked to do is to make sure that when we engage with people, we're not engaging just for engagement's sake. So their foolishness will become our foolishness. And we'll go down rabbit holes that are useless. But sometimes you need to let those who think that they are the smartest thing since sliced bread, that they are not even worth a bag of chips. So yes, when we hear people talking foolishness, we need to interrupt it. Because even our silence will become consent. And we need to show by modeling Jesus how is it that we must live out our lives in the world. This is the season of voting. Over 52 million people have already voted. If, it, if you haven't yet, then your time is coming. You have another 10 days, and then it's over. 
Don't forget, my brothers and sisters, it is your responsibility to make a difference. It's your responsibility to make a difference. The responsibility is yours. It is mine. And my prayer is that God will help us to get to where we need to get so that we can be truly his servants. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to pray with me. Lord God, as we open ourselves to your influence, the influence of your Holy Spirit, we ask you, O God, to imbue wisdom in us so that we will think and act and discern what is right and model what is right so that those who look at us as leaders, those who look at us as guides, will be led aright. Give us the words we need, O oh God, so that we can speak to those who need to hear, so that they can follow you and follow your lead. And then, O oh God, we ask you to give us the courage to act as you would have us act. Not thinking about saving our souls or our lives, but risking who we are and what we have for your will. Go through our minds, our hearts, and our lives, O oh God. Go through our bodies, go through our emotions, and wherever there is illness, there's brokenness, we ask you, O oh God, to heal us or to mend our brokenness and to set us right again, set us as whole people, looking and moving in the right direction, so that you, O God, receive the glory. And those things which we fail to ask in this prayer, we ask you, O God, to add according to your will as you see fit, because we ask you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Let me just quickly remind you of some things. We want to first, though, express gratitude to Taj for recording and seeing that these services are carried live on Facebook and then later on on YouTube and WhatsApp. We want also to thank Reverend Fairweather for her participation and leading in this worship. We want to thank Minister Alabisi for being our liturgist. We want to thank Minister Benjamin for his ministry of music. We want to thank Brother Gums for his ministry of music through Steel Pan. We want to thank Minister Savage for his ministry of music as well. We want to thank Brother Cleveland for seeing to it that these spaces are kept clean and sanitized so that we can feel safe here. And I also want to thank our trustees and Brother Saunders as also our ushers for seeing to it that we follow protocol. Want to also congratulate Sister Rene. Ayoro? Arroyo. Sorry. Sister Rene. You know, some of you might know, but if you didn't, she has been recently elected the new president of the United Methodist Women of the Metropolitan District. So she's not only serving on a local level, she's now serving on a district level, and she needs our support and our prayers, but especially this time, our congratulations. So congratulations to Sister Reddy. Also, want to let persons know that um, the bus is available to bring persons to church, so you need to do 
what you have been accustomed to doing, you know, call brother Paul and let him know that you need to be picked up and he will bring you here. Uh, please do that. Um, need also to mention that we normally would have had our anniversary celebrations in October, but we are moving into November to have our anniversary this year. Um, it will be done virtually. So a host of things starting the 31st of October. And in the bulletin you see the listing, but I want to emphasize this one. On the 31st of October, by Zoom and conference call, we'll be having a congregational meeting. And that congregational meeting starts at 10 and will end promptly at 11.30 or earlier. And at this meeting, we'll be presenting information that are critical as per our development, as well as also our ministries, our needs, our areas that we are thriving. We need to come together as a congregation and engage those things. So each week we will let you know what is coming up that week. So bear that in mind. Also remember that voting ends on the 3rd of November. You can't tell me afterwards, Brother Saunders, that you forget when it was. I know Sister Vicky went out to vote even though the line was all around the block and come back. So persons who haven't yet voted, you need to do that. You see, early voting was meant primarily for persons who had to work and to make it flexible. But with COVID, everybody is home. <laughs> so everybody can go out and vote. Also, I need to make you know that on the 1st of November at 4 p.m. in the afternoon, the Antigua and Barbuda um, Mission will be hosting its 39th Independence Service. And here at Westchester, it will be hosted. It will be carried live streaming virtually. So you can tune in to our Facebook page and you will get the service live. So be that in mind, brothers and sisters, then use our space to get that done. The preacher for that service will be the Reverend Dr. Dave Allen. You might remember him as having come here to preach for our men's day at one time. Um, young man actively present in Brooklyn uh, with the AME Church. So bear that in mind, listening in would be quite a blessing. Want to lift up those who are sick. Sister Vicky, Major Addison, her brother is sick. Sister Holder is sick and recuperating as also Reverend German. But we also learned that Brother Jarrell's mom, Mother Wilson, is also ill. She's at home as also Sister Holder. But we continue to lift them up in prayer because we know that when we pray, God listens and things happen. We express condolences to Sister Toya Toya, Hector George, and we also extend our sympathies and condolences to the family of Sister Beverly Roberts, who was the, formerly the president of the Parkchester branch of the NAACP. She has passed on, and so we want to be remembering her family in our prayers. I hope I'm not forgetting anything of consequence. If I do, shout that out to my humanity. Oh, yeah. Yesterday we had the free COVID testing. And we had a good number of persons who came. And I know Minister Olabisi, who is the head of our health care ministries, 
would want to thank all those who came out, not only to get yourselves tested, but also to support the effort. Uh, persons were tested for COVID, persons were tested for um, hepatitis, hepatitis C and HIV as well. And your blood pressure was taken. So this was a full operational experience. It was in the parking lot, people came off the street just so that, that they could make, take advantage of that. So we thank God for that experience. And yes, yesterday as well we had our annual conference. Um, Sister Cora, our lay leader, Sister Carmen, our lay delegate as well, and Reverend Fairweather and I were um, online, that was virtual. And um, that went smoothly and well. No interruptions, unnecessary interruptions, put it that way. And then also we um, were told that the ordination service will take place on November the 15th. At that time, you can, we'll give you the information so that you can follow it virtually um, as well. Um, nobody from Westchester will be getting our day in our commission, but it's as if we were, because we're all together. Already? That said, I invite us to stand for the benediction. I want to thank all of you who risked coming. I know it was a risk. I want to thank you. I want you to know that we do appreciate that. And we appreciate your giving, which continues to fund the ministries of this church. Eternal God, we lift our heads to receive from you that which only you can give, blessing that is unconditional. Thank you, Lord, for the ways in which you have been present to us and the ways in which you have used us to be present to others. So now, O oh God, as we leave this place, stir us up so that we can take responsibility for our relationship with you and our relationship with this nation. And then because of your influence, because of the influence of the Holy Spirit, we will be found faithful in each of these spheres. So go forth, my brothers and sisters, into your world, claiming responsibility. Mother, inject, necessitate, and engage. And so may God the Father who loves and takes care of you, God the Son who redeemed you by his life, death, and resurrection, God, the Holy Spirit, who continues to give life to you, may God be with you today and every moment of your lives. Amen. Amen. Just remember that as you leave, you go through this door out to the parking lot where you can share some time with each other. Thank <laughs> you.